Welcome back to the greenhouse everyone. We are out here checking out this new solar system. These are a new solar panel we had purchased. They're very interesting. We actually acquired four of these in the kit. Whereas when we have four of those, we have one 100 watt. But these are supposed to be much more efficient. I'm not sure. I'm going to test this. This is why I bought these because they look very interesting to me. And before I spend $1,000 or more, I want to know what I want to buy for a solar cell. I wanna know what kind of kit I'm going to purchase or if I'm gonna piece it together myself. So let's just run through what actually came in this kit. So we've got our battery hookup. These leads run right into our solar controller. This looks like a decent sized solar controller here. Hopefully it's quality. It looks pretty decent. I like what I see here. Our other one was just a cheap little eco worthy. So hopefully this lasts just as long as the cheap model does. This has been running for about three, four years. We used this for a solar chicken pond originally and pumped the pond water and kind of made a creek with it. But now we have this turned around and we are just using it for free energy in our greenhouse and to heat our greenhouse in the winter here, which is a big topic. And this is why we are experimenting with all the solar power because we wanna be able to run all of these systems to pull heat off of our compost with all of this solar energy we're storing. So if you wanna jump down here, we've got the thousand watt solar panel kit. This is our instruction kit, which I'll probably need some point in time, but it's got four solar panels, as you can see, just like this. And they look to be very good quality. Hopefully they can withstand the elements. But we've got some new connections that I have not seen before. Hopefully these are pretty nice for the winter time. They don't look like they will let much moisture in and I will probably seal them up and try and keep them as protected as possible. We have a lot of excavating to do. We've got air hose and water line. We've got to run underneath the wall or through the wall of our greenhouse here. So we're gonna kind of be rearranging all of this stuff. And hopefully we can allocate a few more batteries so we can readjust all of our systems, get them nice and situated for winter and have all of those lines ran and have a nice battery bank. Cause I just ordered a timer. So we're gonna put a timer on our DC system so we'll be able to really get the most for our money off of our system that timer will allow us to really conserve our energy and kind of sporadically run just like in our system in our little greenhouse so the rest of this kit here i guess i'm just meandering on i have these light bulbs that came with it so all of the connections to the uh, actual solar panels are all right here so you've got four plays to plug in all four of those solar panels and it looks like they've got a good distance maybe eight feet or so maybe eight to ten feet of cord you can see it's already producing energy that's the first solar panels i've seen with an indicator light so that's interesting i'm gonna pull all four of these out get them set up and i'm gonna plug everything in and kind of hook up our solar controller and possibly run the light bulbs real quick and just kind of walk everybody through and explain the process of how i'm doing all this and the ease of actually setting something like this up So I've got all four of these solar panels out, got them propped up. They got an awesome little mechanism on the back where it folds out. Pretty cool, I didn't expect that. So we've got to hook up our connector cable and run this into the greenhouse. So we've got them solar panels nice and situated. I wanna show this here. They've got some decent little systems in the back for holding themselves up. They don't seem to be super level, but my ground is pretty lumpy with all the grass underneath here. And they have actual connectors, little bar pieces I'm gonna show that go inside these little holes and you can connect them all in an array. I was worried I was gonna have to build something because I didn't even really pay attention to whether they prop themselves up or not when I purchased them. But all of those wires are kind of unnerving for me. You can see I got four wires, one for every solar panel here. Got a lot, a lot of connections. This is where the bulkhead is basically. So we've got all this extra cable. We've got a lot of extra connections. This connection leads to the actual solar input here. And what I like about this is that it has a solar input where you actually just screw the wire in and it has a solar input that goes and fits with their system. It's got power now, but I've got to hook up my battery and I wanted to go through all the parts. Now these are going to connect right up to my battery. 
as such, just like my large one there. I've got these all jankily hooked together, but I am currently powering all of those. This little fan runs all the way through the night on those two batteries. So if I get a couple more of these, I will be able to run my larger solar pond pump here. So I'll be able to run this DC pump and pump all of our water, basically like this one down here. This one's been used all summer long to drain this tank as we've been watering. We used about a whole tank through the whole summer. So it's pretty interesting. We have this little system where we filled this up with mostly rainwater, some well water, and we've been just pumping it out. And maybe we'll pump some water out of here or I will hook up these lights. It depends on how much juice this battery has left in it. So jumping back down here, we've got our clips and we've got our actual cable. They had done the favor of stripping and marking these. So basically we are just gonna put these right into that. All right, so here we are. This is hard to do one-handed, so I had to set the camera down. We've got our positive, negative. I've already got these marked up top. So I stick those both in, plug in the connection I was already talking about for our solar input. So we've got solar power, we've got a battery. Let's run our lights real quick. I've got the actual light bulb came with a connector that fits in for your DC output here. Hopefully you can see that. DC output, so it has its own system that it runs with, and it gave you the option of putting DC power out with just plugging in wires, which I like because I am going to hook up my own systems that will have no plugs like it comes with in their system. That's why I don't buy anything unless it's able to be just manipulated and you can run your direct wire to it. So we're gonna plug in our DC output. We got a nice congestion of wires going here now. So we've got both of these connections on. Come over to our solar controller here, 13.8. So let's see if, oh, we've got LED lighting. So we've already got power because this battery was charged up from our system before we switched to 12 volt car batteries. So this little system is charging this battery and running enough electricity already probably to run this for a couple hours. And we've got power to our little solar controller. Now there is a couple different settings. You can turn the power on, turn the power off, stop the charging process. It's already got a whole bunch of preset diagnostics in there to have parameters of charging. So it will charge up to a certain point and it will only dispense to a certain point also. So that being said, I am not going to go through every procedure to get where you got to be because I don't know if this actually has a for sure timer in it. I just like to set the parameters low so it goes between the two parameters and it will basically run on a time system so it'll run for a half hour shut off and then it'll run and shut off if we have a cloudy day if we've got a full sunny day our systems will be running because we don't have a good timer right now so i'm basically just using the parameters to keep our systems on or let them dispense all of the energy and shut it down to where it hits low parameter and it shuts the system off this little fan has been running all night for quite some time now after we've hooked up our two batteries to it so we're just going to continue to add on to these systems i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to plug in one of our little pumps so i'm going to pump some water with this solar controller that we just hooked up okay so i've gone ahead and i hooked up our old solar pump here our little dc pump i didn't want to hook up our new one and run hose i already had this little short piece for basically watering and pouring it into a container so we could water so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to turn the dc power on to this oh yep, there we go i've got a good fountain of water get it all over my connections here so i've got good water coming out i'm going to go ahead and check and see if our light still works yep we've got water and we've got a light let me go ahead and turn this off so I can stop flooding out my greenhouse here, but that is very cool. This is awesome stuff. I like to share all of this and I really like building my own knowledge and experimenting with this stuff. I think I have my solar panels upside down. Those cords are supposed to be at the top. So I'm gonna have to flip those over and connect them all together. They came with some nice little bars, little braces to hook them together and wing nuts and bolts, really nice stuff. But I will say all of these connections really concern me. Hopefully these are as waterproof as they say they are because they are said to be pretty weather resistant and great for the heat great for cold so hopefully those last for us that's a lot bigger than what we had but hopefully all that extra light that it catches and all that energy on those really cloudy days 
opposed to our 100 watt solar panel really shines through and we'll be able to use this system in the winter i'm going to prop them up further and keep them clear of snow so we'll be able to heat this greenhouse with our solar systems and our john Payne compost heating so this is very simple stuff just about anybody can do this if you have a little bit of skill with any type of tools you don't necessarily need any power tools unless you are screwing this into a solid surface like this will have to be put up and i'm going to basically work both these systems together and with my new timer I'm going to bring a lot of changes to this greenhouse I'll be clearing out this whole corner over here and redoing everything and kind of getting my solar system ready for winter 